share just a quick little tip. I have a tendency to store jars, empty jars after I've emptied them and I hate that. So it's a fast little tip to get rid of it all. So I boil the kettle. Uh, you can heat water on the hob if you don't have a kettle, either way. It just needs to be really hot water. And then I start by filling the inside of the jar. And then I also fill the outside. I think the heat is softening the bond of the glue on the label. So it should happen fairly quickly. You're always going to get a little bit of residue. I'll show you how to get rid of that as well. Sometimes you put it in and instantly the label comes off. So it just depends on the glue and the label and the manufacturer. And I've got this, um, it's a pots and pan scraper. If you can find one, they're brilliant, honestly. Uh, this one's just made out of bamboo. You can get them made out of plastic. Really worth spending a couple of quid. Each corner is a different size. So no matter what size the pan or the dish or anything is, you can get in the corners. Great. I think the label is as soaked as it's gonna get. Sometimes they come off perfectly in one piece. It's joyous, but it's not one of those. You could use a knife, I guess. Let's see if that works. Yep, yeah, that works fine. Once you've got all of the paper and bits off as much as you can, you'll be left with, you can see it, it's kind of, um, just sticky residue everywhere. I'm going to show you two different ways of getting the adhesive off. You just need a bit of kitchen towel, <laughs> probably a dry surface. First way is just oil. I'm going to do two different areas. You can spray the paper or spray the jar. Good thing about using just the oil is that it's not toxic or hazardous, anything like that. There's no harsh chemicals in it. <laughs> it does take longer. I'm going to have to just keep repeating it adding a bit more oil, rubbing it in, any stubborn bits, get your nail in. But you can see, if I can get that to you, you can see here, it's all clear. Oh, in fact, there's another way. I've just remembered. Let me get something else, I'm sorry. Just lighter, fu 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 <laughs> lighter fluid slash lighter fuel. What you'd use in a, the, well, a Zippo lighter. The sort you flip open and uh, there's a wheel inside. I was told this years ago by a guy, he did window graphics. He'd sometimes get like stubborn spots of old signs, old stickers, that kind of thing. And it's not ideal for this job because of the amount of it that you'll go through. I don't think it's any more effective than the oil. Oil's cheaper. <laughs> but, you know, in a pinch. So you can see I've got, you know, like two thirds of the label off which is fine, but I'm gonna use this stuff. It's WD-40, so there's oils and a solvent in it. I think that's the key, the key feature. So shake, give it a little bit of a spray. Just be careful of these surfaces, uh, particularly if they're lining up, I guess. Just be careful, you don't wanna you know, make a dull spot in it or anything like that. But the WD-40 works much quicker. You can be as pedantic as you want with these, but I, I'm very pedantic. There we go. A nice clean jar, no label, ready to put lots of yummies in. I'm going to share this with you. I do a lot of batch cooking, store cupboard, bulk buying, that kind of thing. And it can just be a bit of a hassle <laughs> finding different labels or just writing on in, in a sharpie. Uh, so you end up scribbling out, writing over and over and over again, you've got no space. So I use masking tape, uh, so I've got the water left over from soaking some mushrooms, dried mushrooms, uh, leftovers for dinner, aquafaba, uh, that's the liquid that comes out of a chickpea can and you can whip it up and make meringues. There will be a video at some point in short. I thought I'd share it with you while I do a jar. Uh, so the masking tape won't stick to certain uh, materials. I found on silicone bags, it's not great. So just keep an eye on it. I think the freezing just stops it from sticking as well as it should. So I made uh, some custard powder last night. So I'm just gonna light custard powder. I just wanted to show you how you can turn a load of these into one of those. Makes it a little bit easier to store. Uh, fold it in half, uh, lengthwise, I guess. And you wanna kind of smooth out as much air as you can. So if you go from the bottom upwards, get the air out, fold it over again, fold it into 
a right, right angle triangle if my high school teaching is stuck. Uh, fold it and then you're just folding it again and then just keep folding it up on itself. You'll get a loose end and then you'll get a little kind of pocket in there and you're basically just stuffing that into that. tip for you just in case you've forgotten to soften some butter you take it out of the fridge in time for baking uh, uses the microwave I don't know how to do it without a microwave it might work in the oven but the heat might be too intense uh, so weigh it out here I have 50 grams of butter so that's what that looks like sliced it into a heat proof dish leave that for a second then you want a cup full of water put that in the microwave two minutes and when you take it out you need to be really quick because you want to trap the steam inside and it's the steam that's going to soften the butter. The microwave's just finished so now I'm going to quickly take the cup out, put the dish in, get the door shut and then just leave it about 10 minutes. Nice and soft. It's a great way of softening butter and, make, and softening it not melting it because it's a fine line <laughs> and you need it to be like this for certain types of um, when you're making pastry especially, sometimes you have to be able to crumble it and you, you just won't do that with melted butter. So there you go, softening butter.